Hi, Kev. How are you doing, folks? Alec Pierce at the ranch, and here I am at the front gate of our property. We're pretty proud of this gate. You know, we live in Ontario, but Ontario is actually uh, uh, quite famous for its farming, dairy, uh, beef, and of course, uh, uh, forage farming as well. Very, very famous, wonderful soil. And uh, while this particular gate that I built is was built to resemble a Western ranch style, which, which I like, I spent a lot of time in Montana and Wyoming, I really, really like that. It, it still looks really good here. Uh, first of all, let me tell you a secret. You've seen this gate a couple of times. It's made of telephone poles. Yeah, now there's a tip for you guys who want to build a nice gate. Telephone poles. Well, where do you get telephone poles? Well, they're all over. Every road has got lots of them. Just get your chains. No, I'm kidding. If you drive down some roads in your area and you see telephone poles and they're gray and cracked and rotting, make a note of it. Because sometime reasonably soon, your local hydro facility will be replacing those poles. That's how I got these. That's right. I noticed one day that they're replacing these old cracked gray poles with nice new, really tall, green poles. Nice poles. Buy one of these ones. Yeah, they were great. And so I went to one of the fellows and I asked him about them. He says, well, you know, we just usually leave them on the side of the road. And then one of our crew comes along, picks them up and takes them away. And I said, well, what do they do with them? Well, he says, we'd chop them up, put them in the dump, destroy them. I couldn't believe it. These are great poles. The bottom of the pole is pressure treated to, to last a long time. The pole is big and strong and still very good. It may not be good enough for the hydro facility, but it's good enough for me. And it may be good enough for you. So hydro poles, and then just cut them out so I have two uprights. Make sure they're correct. Put a, 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 a notch on the top. I change our little notch. And then cut your cross piece with a flat. The biggest problem is getting it up there. A variety of ways. If you have a big tractor, that sure helps. You can stand and lift it up. If not, you can use come-alongs and pull it up with a couple of good strong guys. Anyway, figure that out. The uh, the uh, angle pieces for braces, not a bad idea. I just have them up there mainly for looks. And certainly the wheel that you've seen inside the brace, that's just for looks too. But it looks really good. Anyway, this is our gate. Now, the problem with the gate, this part of the gate, is this part of the gate. The actual gate itself, the swinging part. If you live on a country and you, you have gates in your property, you know that these things are a darn nuisance. You have to have them, but they are a nuisance. If, if, you're, if it's anything like us, we have about seven or eight of these around our property. Anything like here, these gates are always getting out of adjustment and tilting and hitting the ground and up, oh, it's just a nuisance. So for this particular gate, which I wanted to be especially secure and good looking too, I took a little extra time. First of all, the gate is very commonly in this open position, which places a lot of weight. There's a lot of weight on that pole pulling down that weight. This is a 14-foot gate, steel gate made of triangular steel. There's a lot of weight. And so we found that this particular post was tipping pretty frequently. And I would come out and I straighten it with the tractor. Be careful, these will snap off, believe it or not. The tractor and we put some poles down, so rock down, straighten it up. Sure enough, next spring it'd be tilted again. So finally I got tired of doing that and I solved the problem. I got another piece of cedar post, not a telephone pole, but just a good six or eight inch piece of cedar post. And you can see it's quite long. This is a 16 foot piece. And I went out here, there's no particular distance, just whatever suits your particular gate. I'm down quite a ways, over four feet. We need over four feet here to be sure we get below the frost line. And I dug a hole. Now, this is a very specific hole. I made certain that the hole has a straight edge. So that far edge is dead straight down. And then it slopes up this way. Dead straight down, slopes up that way. And then all I had to do was cut the bottom of this pole with a matching slope on it, put it down in that post, and bring it up against the gate. Then I filled the hole in properly, packed it down a little bit, and then I climbed up here. And with some help, I made sure that the pole was perfectly plumb, straight up and down. And once I had done that, I drilled through, and you can see what I did, because things change. I didn't nail it on there. I didn't screw it on there. I used a great big threaded rod, a threaded rod, half inch threaded rod, bolt and washer on this side, and then another bolt and washer on the back side. Why did I do that? Well, because it's adjustable. That's right. If I notice that this gate is starting to sag, I can check the plumb of this post, and if it's changed, which it probably has, 
I can simply go up there and I can adjust it. I can actually loosen that nut and bolt, push the post back plumb, and slide a piece of wood in behind if I need to. If it gets really bad, I can actually drill another hole and come down a little bit, straighten it up and come down a bit. Point is, putting it together that way makes this post adjustable. So in the future, any sag with the post I can quickly and easily correct. Just a couple of tips. That's what I found works really well. We've had a lot of gates and it's always been a nuisance. I've tried cables and wires and so on. This has worked really, really well. It's been here for three years and no sag. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention while I'm here, and it's going to be a future video, it may not be for a short while. But the other thing about this particular gate, being our front gate, our security gate, if you like, is that I have an electric opener for it. That's right. And it's fantastic. We had it on here for two years. And then when I replaced this gate with a brand new one, and at the same time put in that adjustable bar up there, I took the opener off. I left it off for a full year, so it's been off for over a year. I'm going to put it back on, and it's really, really nice. The electric opener is exactly as it says, electric opener, and it's pretty slick. So if you're coming home at night, your gate is closed. As you're coming up the driveway, up the, up the roadway, you press a button, and the gate opens. Wide open. You drive in, head off to the home. About 15 to 20 seconds after you go through, it closes. How about that? You don't have to get out of the car, summer, winter. You don't have to get out of the car or the truck to open and then to reclose the gate. That's fantastic. When you leave, there's a sensor about 50 feet up the road. There's a buried sensor, four feet underground, with a cable that runs up to the control box. And when anybody's coming out, when they pass that sensor, the gate opens. Out they go. Gate closes. It works really, really well. A couple other things nice about the opener that we have, it locks. There's actually a lock on that post, matching bracket on the end of the gate. So when this gate closes, it locks. There's actually a clamp and it locks tight so nobody can get in or out. They, they can't push the gate open or close. It's locked at that end, which is a really nice feature to have. And then the final feature, we have remote control. Out here at the gate, if somebody comes and they don't have a, 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 a a remote control for the gate, and we want to let them in. We don't want to have to walk a thousand feet from the house down here to open the gate for them. So right here, out by the gate, there's a little keypad. That's right. And we give our friends and our family a number, their own personal code. So they can come, punch in the number, one, two, three, four, and the gate opens. Of course, it opens and lets them out when they're finished. Suppose somebody shows up and they don't have a code. It happens sometimes. Well, the first thing we do is get out the binoculars and see who it is. They can push the call button. It buzzes in the kitchen. We check through the binoculars, see if it's somebody we want to let in. Another nice thing about this gate, huh? And if it is someone that we want to let in, we can push a button in the kitchen. It opens the gate, lets them in. So this particular opener, which I'll be featuring in one of my upcoming episodes, is also part of this gate. So you watch for farm gate number two and uh, watch for my electric opener. But there's a couple ideas, adjustable support, and uh, the gate itself made out of telephone poles. Maybe there's some ideas that you can use at your ranch as well. Okay, folks, talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce at the ranch.